this one good morning valerie ling here it's a somewhat gray and dreary morning at the moment and i am getting ready this morning to actually be interviewed it's valerie ling here with you doing a little bit of truth telling i always get anxious i always get nervous about these things I haven't fully unpacked why this happens, but it will. And I can guarantee you, I will be spending the next hour and a half before the interview fretting. However, I need to do something before this interview starts. You see, I'm being interviewed today about some things that are very personal. I will have to talk about my story. I have to tell the truth and figure out the connections of the story uh, particularly being interviewed today as a business owner i think that's the the gist of it and there are two questions about my business journey that i don't hold on to the information i just don't have the answer readily available so let me ask you this question if i were to ask you when did you buy your car i can tell you when i bought my car i love a certain brand and type of cars i can tell you when i bought my car if i were to ask you how many uh kids you have or how many brothers or sisters you have i bet you can answer that i can answer that i know exactly how many siblings i have if i were to ask you how many plates do you have in your cupboard i wouldn't have a clue I have no idea. Do you know how many plates you have in your cupboard? There is something about remembering some of these specifics and these details, these, these numbers, these descriptives that tells us something about the importance of the information. I'm pretty sure that if you are somebody who, who might, you know, I know people like this, they remember everybody's birthdays. Ah, uh, I can't remember everybody's birthdays and it's not because I don't like them. There's a certain weight given to the information that you hold in your head. There are two questions about my business journey that I stumble on. And even being able to talk about my business journey was a major stumbling block ages ago. The two questions I'm embarrassed to say. The first one is, how many people do you have on your team? This question is laced with all kinds of interpretations by the type of answer the person is looking at. And this may even just be fabricated in my head. Have you been in this situation though, when, when people are ask you questions around a detail, you know, it used to be that I've grown up in an Asian household and then I lived in Australia from the age of about 11 then when you go back and visit your relatives you know people want to want to tell you whether you've put on weight or not the other thing that gets sussed out is how much money you make right so as an asian a person when you return to your asian relatives whether you go back overseas or or you're just in relatives homes people want to suss out how much money you make and there are all these different ways that can be asked. Are you full-time? Are you part-time? Do you work in the CBD? Or do you work, you know, how, how many people are in your company? And sometimes they just come flat out and say, so how much money do you make? This has happened to me. I used to get stumped as a younger person in the midst of elders and, you know, you the first time someone asks you this, you feel like so dishonest if you don't tell the truth. So you just blurt out how much you make. And then comes the knowing look and the nod. Mm. Some kind of abacus has gone on in the mind and calculated what this actually means. I was able to eventually progress to be able to say, I make enough. Yeah, I make enough. How much is enough? Enough for, for me to live and to give or whatever. All right. Now, this money, when you're with this question, when you're a business owner, uh, people don't really. I have seen other people come up straight up and say, What's your turnover? It's like, Whoa, okay. Um, are you GSD registered? Mm -hmm. uh, how many people are in your team? I have had the unfortunate early experiences, much like the experience that I shared with, with relatives, and they're asking you how much you make. 
I have had the unfortunate experience of answering um, the question in those early days. And then comes, and how many full-time equivalent is that? Mm. And are they subcontractors or are they employees? Mm. And how many non-income generating staff do you actually have? Aha. Uh -huh. And how many days are you working in your business? Mm -hmm. And from there, some kind of abacus is going on in the head. Do you know what I mean by an abacus? Some kind of calculator, right? It's going on in their head and they're, they're assessing, or at least this is how I interpret it, they're assessing whether legitimately whether you have a business and um, how big it is and whether they're going to further this conversation with you. And I'm very sorry to say that I could be wrong in my assumptions as to what is happening, but I have had the very unfortunate situation where people just move on. Uh, whether it's in a networking event or, uh, you know, whether you're sitting down at a table having a conversation and the assessment has been made and people move on. So that is one part of the que of the reason perhaps why I haven't held that. I think that it's grossly dismissive of the people who work for me. They are trophies. They're not like some badge that I wear and say, oh, look, this many. Mm -hmm. full-time equivalent and these are the non-income generating people they're like my my i'm privileged so i don't hold that in my head uh, there's some other issues that are deeper the second question and this one i am confessing to you this morning on this day I haven't fully unpacked and I'm going to need to because I'm starting to feel like I'm fibbing <laughs> because every time someone asks me this question, I seem to have a different answer uh, because this is going to go on record now. I think like the more people want to talk to me about being a business owner, um, I guess at some point it's going to go on the record. Oh, she you know established blah, 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 blah. Have you guessed it? Do you know what the question is that I get stumped on? The question is, how long have you been in business? Ah, I just get stumped on this one. I need to unpack this. There's something going on behind why I just don't want to answer that question. Why I don't want to remember the, the date, the year. I have no idea. What I can tell you is that I am looking at my three whiteboards in my home office at the moment. I've been procrastinating rubbing off the stuff that's on there. It's been sitting there for a few months. I need to figure out and map out why can't I answer this question? I don't know when I started business. I, I don't know. I don't have the answer and I need to figure out why I suspect and maybe this is like you. There's something that I'm afraid of. There's something that I'm I'm afraid of being evaluated or assessed on. There's something about it that maybe I'm even embarrassed about or maybe I'm even afraid about. I don't know. However, it needs to be unpacked. You're going to find probably in your journey that there are going to be some success and failure, uh, good, bad, uh, tight questions that you avoid you know with our clients in the center for effective living in the mental health and mental wellness space sometimes we find that that's because people have had some kind of a bullying history or some kind of negative uh, experience that have led to some messages that they've encoded about themselves that are profoundly negative and profoundly untrue and when we help them to walk through that we re realize that some kind of mental a prison that we've been living in that doesn't change just because you lead a team or are self-employed anything that requires some kind of risk where people are going to look at you and say what on earth why who are you uh, do you think like you even deserve you know all of this kind of stuff it pushes us back into some kind of cognitive prison and i think i am in one of those i'm gonna to have to deal with it i've got about an hour to clear my whiteboard it's almost like clear all that stuff that i'm actually hiding behind because i haven't dealt with this issue right 
clear the whiteboard and I'm going to have to write the timeline of my business journey, answer the question and figure out why I am so stuck in this space. I'm not going to share it on Facebook Live what the answer is, but I will invite you to have a cuppa with me in April. I will share that with you and we'll have a chat about what that might mean for you. All right, go to the board, go to the board. Do you know that? Go to the mattress. It's one of my favorite, not the movie where that line comes from, but a female character when she talks about her business and she says, go to the mattress, go to the mattress. That's like one of my favorite movies. Gonna have to go to the